Okay, we've um, picked our um, population or sample. We have picked our variable. We have questioned or figured out um, and wrote down on our clipboard all our data from each of our subjects and what to do now. We need to organize the data in a way that we want to show other people and we want to understand ourselves what the data is telling us, of course. Um, one of your choices is to make a frequency table or a frequency distribution. Um, a categorical frequency distribution, remember category is from the nominal or ordinal data that have the words. Um, we can still make um, uh, columns and a tally basically how many of which kind that we get. So for an example, a local college coffee shop keeps a tally of types of drinks that their customers order each hour. Below is the data from 49 drinks sold before the closing on a recent Tuesday during a one hour period. All right, so clearly not all, not all the types of drinks um, ordered by customers at that shop, but a sample of the types of drinks ordered in that one hour before closing on Tuesday, okay? So our variable is um, considered our X value. Um, it's a data value that represents the type of drink, which is our variable. Uh, and we have 49 results, um, subjects, people, customers in the hour that um, was before the store closed. And we wrote down what type of drink on our clipboard that they ordered. All right, so we want to organize this. So one way to organize it is a nice um, categorical frequency distribution. So if you notice, um, when you look through, there are only four types of drinks that were ordered at the end in that one hour, okay? So we want to count up how many of each there are. So one way is to use a tally system. So if you have coffee, that's a coffee. You have a tea, that's a tea. Um, you have espresso, 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 coffee, espresso, coffee, tea. I'm trying to do this without moving this thing. Let's see. And so forth, right? You get the idea for that. What's going to happen is I'm going to go through these, all 49 of them, and I'm going to end up with 16. I'm going to count up my tallies as 15, 16. Okay, and I'm going to get 16 when I'm done. There's going to be 20 espressos, four sodas, and nine teas. I want to make sure that when I did my tally, I got everything. I was trying to systematically go through and do these kind of in order. Um, another way to go is um, on the key, what I did was I counted the coffees. I didn't use the tally system. I went, okay, there's one coffee. Let me, let me erase. Hang on. Another way to go. Um, up to you but another way to go is okay there's one coffee two coffees three coffees four five six seven eight and so forth and count up all the coffees and i better get 16 so that's certainly a way to check um 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 that's what i had all right so maybe double check because i'm going to use these numbers to do other things um, tea, there were, or sodas, there's only four, so let's double check that one. One, two, three, four. Yep, there is only four. Okay, so that's our frequency. So to get our relative frequency, how many was this supposed to be? Another way to check, add these columns up. Oops, add this column up here, and we should get an N of 49, right? 29, 4, 20, 40, 49, right? Okay, so a relative frequency, relatively speaking, relative to the rest of the types of drinks that were ordered, 
16 out of 49 were ordered, which gives you a decimal. 16 divided by 49 is 32.65. As a percent, let's just round to a whole number by multiplying by 100 and rounding. You're going to get about 33%. Okay, 20 out of 49.4082 is about a 41%. 4 out of 49, I'm showing my work here about 8%, 9 out of 49. Sometimes you're going to be requested for a four-digit decimal, so make sure you're rounding properly to the fourth digit. Then you're, uh, if you're asked for a percent instead, you want to multiply that by 100 and round to whatever decimal they want. If it's a whole number, it's 18, okay? And cumulative frequencies um, count the frequencies as you go. So in the first class you have, um, you can call these classes, okay? The first class is 16. Um, but if somebody said in the first two types, in the first two classes, how many altogether? You'd say 36, because that's 16 plus 20. And then 36 plus 4 is 40. Cumulative, okay? So 40 plus 9 is 49. And this last one better equal your N or you've messed something up. Okay. You can also do the cumulative relative frequency. Um, so 16 in the first one. Then the second one is 33% um, plus the 41% gives you 74% of the customers the types of drink that they ordered was coffee and espresso, okay? Um, if you add in the soda, 82%, and of course, when you add in the tea, that's 100% of everything that was ordered, okay? So you can also make a frequency table out of data that is um, qualitative, okay? It's a little more complicated. You're still going to have the classes. Let me just go down to show you. You're still going to have the classes. These are class limits, class boundaries, class midpoints. Here's the same tally. We're going to figure out the frequency, the relative frequency, and the cumulative frequency the same way, only with numbers. And I have made up a nice step chart here. How many classes do you want? Um, the coffee example, there was only four kinds of drinks that were ordered so that's what we made it um, you want to use the number of classes they give you typically they give you how many classes they want um, depending on um, what they've already decided uh, the example I'm going to use tells you they want six classes okay and the first thing you want to do when it's numerical is find your minimum and your maximum value okay so if I have these numbers here um, there's no context. These aren't coffees or whatever. So let's just assume they're idgets or widgets, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> so I need to find the minimum number according to these steps, okay? Because there's six classes. I need a maximum and minimum value. Uh, let's see. There's a min and the max here. Okay, so we take the minimum... Um, from the maximum and get something called the range of values, right? When we did the dot plot, you had to know the lowest and the highest so you could make a scale large enough. Um, these were going to make classes and class limits large enough to get everybody. So uh, class <clears throat> is going to be um, 5, 30 minus 30 is going to give you 500 as the range. Okay, and then the class width is the range divided by the number of classes they're going to get to give you the class width. So if you take uh, five, uh, 500 and divide it by 6, you're going to get 8.3, and you always round up no matter how small the decimal. Remember, we want to encompass all the values, so we always go up. It's uh, um, 83 isn't enough. So we have to go to 84 to make sure we get everybody in there. All right, so then we figure out the lower class limits of each class, starting with the minimum value, 
add the class width to the next lower limit. Okay, so what we do is we start with this 30 and I add 84 and get the 114. Add 84 and go down and actually work on the lower limits first. And when I add 84 at the end here, I'm gonna get 534, which means that one ended in 533. The limits never overlap in numbers. Where one finishes, the next one starts on the next one. Think of these as buckets, okay? Ever all the val data values that fell between 30 and 113 went in the first bucket. All the values that fell 114 to 197 went in that bucket. So you can't have any on the edge because you won't be able to put it in the bucket. Okay? Um, so I go through and I find all the numbers like 280. 280 falls in this bucket. Okay? 221. 221 falls in this same bucket. Okay? So I'm going to make this, uh, let me put the tallies over here. 1, 2, and then 145 is in this one. 221 was in this one. 113 is in this one, and so on. So I'm going to do that and cross out all these numbers to make sure that I have them. And then when I count up my tallies, I want to make sure that I have all 31. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here to here. This matches plus 1. So 15 numbers over plus one, that's 31 numbers, data values. Okay, so I wanna make sure I got them all. Tally up my number. And then they're asking for some more information on this chart. When you have class limits and you're making a histogram, you can make a histogram um, with boundaries. So think of these as buckets, but then the sides of the buckets are the boundaries. Um, so they're not actual limits, they're a step down and a step up from the limit. See how this is, the limit is 30, so a half a step down, a decimal half down would be 29.5, and then 113 half up, and then notice that the boundaries are the sides. So think of a histogram, okay? If this first line is 29.5, then this first is 13 here, so the next one was a little bigger. Histograms have their classes the same here. See how their sides are the same? So this right here is 1975. So inside the bucket, all the values fall, right? The bucket are the limits here. The boundaries are the sides of the buckets that hold the limits. So they're the boundaries, okay? so. Midpoint is wherever the middle of each class is. So we find the midpoints. We find the midpoints by adding the two limits together and dividing by two and finding the middle. That's all. Okay. So these are all the middles of the buckets um, of numbers. And then the relative frequencies are found the same. If I have 31 total, there's five in the first class, five divided by 31. Feel free to put decimals down there. And remember all these have to add up to one or 1% 1 if they're in percents. And then cumulative frequencies, you're going to have five in the first, five plus seven. Yeah. In the second, that gives you 12. So you're going to use cumulative frequencies and should end on your N in the last column. Okay, I know I did that fast, but um, we're gonna tr we're gonna practice this, and this is our um, how we're gonna do this. Okay, there's the nice steps here. I would keep this step page.